Hi everybody and welcome back to part 38 of our Trumpeter Hood build. Uh, in this video I'm going to finish off the work that we started last week on the quarter deck. I got most of it done uh, but there's just some more work to do around the uh, X bar bet here with some vents to fit uh, all from the Pontos set. We've got some fair leads just to finish off further aft on the deck and I want to get all the rear screen work done as well so We've got four large ladders to fit from the quarter deck up to the forecastle deck on the rear screens. Uh, there's a couple of doors to fit uh, and I want to finish off the railings around the top of the rear screens here as well. So there's a little bit of building to do and some more fitting to the deck but once we've done that the aft part of the ship will be finished. So we'll get over to the bench and get the parts cut out and we'll make a start on this part of the build. Okay, I'm going to start this week with these uh, vents which run up uh, the side of the X bar bet on the aft side of the ship. So we have four of one style, one of a smaller style, which is this one, and we have this completely turned brass piece which is brass piece 49 from the Pontos set and actually that replaces one of the plastic small mushroom vents that we fitted last week when we were just following the trumpeter instructions and it's an example where you've just got to be careful and it's very difficult to cross-reference the Pontos instructions with the trumpeter instructions and that's because the Pontos instructions are in no particular order. You've just got to work out uh, your own build sequence in terms of the Pontos set. Uh, so it does make the build a bit more complicated. And that's an example where I've missed the fact that this Pontos brass piece replaces uh, one of the trumpeter plastic pieces. Uh, but it's not a problem. We we um, fitted the plastic parts, as you remember, with some of the MIG Ultra Glue, which is an acrylic glue. It's this one. And although it's strong, it'll pull away without leaving a mark. It won't do any damage to, to remove that mushroom vent. So anyway, we'll get these four etched brass vents made up and this smaller one. Uh, this is the instruction for how to do it. It's made up of it's just made up of three parts for each uh, vent. So I'll fold those up and I will solder them just to add a bit of strength to them but just be careful not to obstruct the actual vent detail here which is actually absent on the trumpeter kit so this is an improvement over the trumpeter plastic part. These are all the etch brass parts and we just need the one uh, turn brass part from this part of the kit which is this vent here. So that's going to replace the mushroom vent that I fitted in error last week. It's quite an unusual vent so I'm not sure why Trumpeter missed it. Right, so we'll make a start. I'm going to start with folding these top parts for the vents. So to get this box as close as possible to the correct position the irons up to temperature so it's ready to go and I'll just be soldering this on the back face and a little bit along the side. I don't want to venture anywhere near the actual grill detail at the front because the solder could easily run into that uh, and once it does I've got 
quite a difficult cleanup job to do. So I'll just confine myself to the back face and just slightly along the side just to make sure that it's fixed. So I'm happy with that position. We'll just get some flux onto the back along the joints. I think that's okay. It doesn't need much. These are very small parts. There's no strength required in them really. So we'll just give that a bit of a clean and just make sure that it is actually sealed. Being on the back face, the solder, that uh, actually butts up against the barbette wall. So we're not going to see the back of these. That's not a reason to not try and do a decent job of them. You can see there's quite a lot of flux residue on these parts, as well as solder. And someone asked last week uh, via the comments what if anything I do to clean the parts before painting them when they've been soldered and I gave a cautious answer really because doing what I do requires certain precautions to be taken because I clean the parts through the airbrush with cellulose thinners and that gets rid of the flux residue but clearly spraying and atomizing cellulose thinners into the atmosphere means that you have to ventilate the area so I've got the extraction system in the spray booth on full and perhaps even more importantly you've got to wear a proper respirator so a dust mask is no good when you're atomizing uh, solutions like thinners or any sort of toxic lacquer paints or anything like that and atomizing is clearly what you're doing when you're using an airbrush so uh, the cellulose thinner certainly gets rid of the flux residue but it will also get rid of your lining in your lungs so it's not recommended to inhale it so with that warning you might want to try it the alternative is to wash the parts uh, and scrub them probably just in soapy water that would probably clear a lot of the residue off and it would be a lot safer obviously but whatever you do you have to get the residue off the paint won't adhere to parts with flux residue on it'll just scrape straight off the other thing just an extra precaution really when you're using a respirator even if you've got a respirator on is not to stay in the work area with the respirator removed so what I do is I'll uh, just leave the shed for 10 minutes or so with the extraction remaining on and I'll do that uh, before removing my respirator and that's just make sure that you're not taking the respirator off and inhaling anything in the atmosphere this is the smaller style of vent so you can see it's quite a bit smaller than the other four that we've just made and just because of its size it's slightly more tricky to fold together the principle is exactly the same with this it's just harder to get the part where you want it just because of its size That one's very awkward, but anyway, I think we've got it. There we are, that's done. So there are the actual vents. Do the trunking now, and this is just a simple box. With these parts, you can see that the fold line is etched with a kind of a dotted line and it is actually perforated so just a warning with these whenever you see these perforated lines think fragile 
they uh, will bend once or twice I know I've said that before but you really need to be getting these in the right place as quickly as you can and getting them soldered up because if these parts snap you've got a hell of a job to get them lined up again so get them into the box shape as quickly as you can and with as little fuss as you can not fiddling around with it and get some solder on to seal it I'm going to go in from the outside to start with just to get it into position so like that nice and square but once it's in a square and soldered it's very strong it's just when it's in this state and you're folding it that the weakness is there and the potential for breaking it is there again a clean up and I want to get the solder out of these little etch grooves here there's these parts to fit around the outside this backside here butts up against the barbette so we don't have to worry too much about it you're not going to be able to see this face but we still want it to be fairly flat otherwise it might just obstruct the uh, line of the vent up against the barbette so get the worst of it off but we don't need to fuss too much about it and the actual vent opening sits on top of the trunking in the little square that is etched into the bottom of the grill the trunking <coughs> has two bands on it uh, the one closest to the end goes to the top what I want to do is just put some solder into the back I'm avoiding the front again because I don't want to block the grill up we'll just get some flux onto the underside the difficult thing is to position the trunking just make sure we've got it the right way around so that's just the sides they're really very difficult to get those balanced and central to the trunking but I don't suppose there's any other way of making these out of etch brass because you've got the actual head of the vent is larger than the trunking itself you've got to have it as a separate part really can't see how you'd do it any other way but the downside is obviously that you've got to kind of balance that on top of the trunking itself and get it nice and square and centralized we've got it so that the solder's all been done around the side here so there's uh, less risk of the solder flooding into the the vent detail itself which is what you want to try and avoid otherwise you might as well just use the pontos parts with the molded grill on it these do look an awful lot better than the trumpeter parts we'll take a look at one when we've come and built them just to compare obviously this is an awful lot more effort than cutting out the trumpeter parts and priming them and painting them up basically that's all you need to do but uh, you'll have to judge for yourselves whether or not it's worth the effort of building these they'll probably take me I don't know a couple of hours to make these five so that's one down got another three of those to do and the smaller one okay these are the parts uh, cleaned up and they've come out okay we'll just take a look at them alongside the trumpeter parts 
So if we just do a direct comparison of the two. So obviously the Pontos parts are much harder to make. The trumpeter parts are all one. But they lack the grill detail at the top, which obviously the Pontos parts have. And the grills are in keeping with the other uh, engine room vents on the shelter deck. So you get consistency throughout the model if you do the Pontos vents like this. These are the brackets that we need for the actual trunking. And they've got tiny uh, tabs on the end which actually butts up onto the barbette itself. So it's a proper bracket really to hold these trunks onto the barbettes. And I'm just going to glue these with some uh, extra thin or super thin super glue by uh, fitting them in place and then just adding a small spot just to the back face of these brackets. I'm going to need to clean these up a little bit. The, I've got too much on that. Just hold it until the CA goes off, which is just a few seconds normally. When you put too much on it, obviously just increases the drying time a little bit. It's easy enough to bend these brackets with the tweezers. And I start with the little attachments that fit to the barbette. And then do the rest of the bend. And I actually just over bend these a little bit. So rather than just the 90 degrees, I go a bit further than that. And that just helps to have the uh, bracket grip onto the trunking. So I've got a bit less on there, that's better. And that should dry a bit quicker. Need to clean that first one up a little bit where I've got too much glue on. But it's easy to scrape it off. I just use a curved knife blade. These small brackets for this narrower vent are obviously a little bit more difficult to fold up. But again, it's exactly the same principle, just over bend them a little bit. giving those a little squirt of accelerator just to set them up straight away. Just avoids having to hang on with the tweezers holding them in place. So to prepare the rest of the trunking parts, these all these plastic uh, parts, I'm going to put them on a separate board. This is double sided tape I've got on here. But because they're all so similar, if we look at the trumpeter sprue, these are all different but look quite similar so I don't want to get them mixed up uh, so because of that I'll lay them all out on this board once I've prepared each one of them and then just make a note uh, in this little box here which number appears where on my uh, spray panel Obviously I can't put the numbers on the panel because it'll just get uh, overpainted with primer and the top coat. So we'll lose the numbers. So I just need to make this replica of the board so that I know uh, which part is which. Uh, and that way we shouldn't get them mixed up. So all of these parts I'm going to prepare. We've got A23 and A24, which are these. They go on the rear bulkhead. Uh, of the screens just below the uh, aft mounting. The location instructions for these vents uh, appear on several pages of the trumpeter instructions. 
So we just need to be careful to get them all. Uh, they show it like that because we're looking from port and star, but it would it would be hard for Trumpeter, uh, admittedly, to get all of the locations clearly in one drawing. So they tend to uh, do a port and starboard view on two separate pages. So the next ones I'm going to get are 47 and 49. These parts have this little flange around the top, which I suppose could be mistaken for flash, but uh, it isn't. It uh, will just locate the part onto the side of the barbette. So having cleaned them up, I'll just place them on the board ready for painting and mark on the position on my little uh, schematic here. These parts here on the trumpeter plan are actually the plastic parts for which we have the brass parts made up. So we don't need those three. So these are the four plastic trunkings that we need for the aft barbette. But because I've got all this procedure laid out, I want to go ahead and do the forward barbettes as well which has all these trunkings all the way around uh, and also on the front bulkhead of the bridge down here there are some uh, trunking pieces as well so I'm going to paint all those while I've got this process in train so I'll prepare all these parts uh, as I have done with the aft barbette trunks uh, and that will just enable me to paint everything together and it will save on preparation time and also you'd waste less paint by having the parts uh, all laid out together. Right so these are all the parts that we need for the trunking and vents so these are the brass ones obviously that we made earlier in the video. I've also added this uh, turn brass vent as well and I've also done the two barbette ladders uh, just so that we can finish off the barbettes uh, with these parts. And these are the uh, trumpeter plastic parts all cleaned up and they are all in order so that I've got my little reference sheet with all the numbers of these so that we don't get them mixed up. You can see here that there are only these four here that are the same. I think they're G12. So they're all ready to paint. So these will be done in Tamiya uh, lacquer primer. And the metal parts, the brass parts, will be done as usual with the etching primer. So I'll get those over, we'll get them sprayed up uh, with the primer uh, ready for final painting. So these are the parts that we need for the rear screens. So we have these very prominent ladders on hood which went from the quarter deck up to the forecastle deck uh, just up the side of the rear screens and there were two on each side and they have these little platforms at the top which are folded up. I'll do the other two on camera the ladders have obviously been folded as well and the treads bent to shape. We have the two railings here which go uh, above the screens on the shelter deck. Uh, a couple of doors for the bulkhead and these winches which go on the screens themselves. So the machinery for these must have been inside. Uh, the bulkhead at that point. They go under just under these ladders. These are the starboard ones so they are obviously matching. The port ones will just be a mirror image of them and bending them is a little bit tricky because they've got uh, brackets and angles all in the same piece of etching. So this part here, this open part, is actually the underside. It's an underside frame that folds all the way underneath 
and we'll solder it at the front along with the railing when we get to that point. And that's the first bend that I want to make because of this narrow strip here which uh, we want to make sure that doesn't twist. And once that's on the move I'll then fold the brackets up. It's quite a puzzle to work out which bend goes where on these. I'm leaving the railings until last you'll notice. So that's the first step. We've got that underside frame bent all the way underneath and the two brackets folded up. I'll get the railings bent so there's this this one here this small one we don't need to get these exactly into position just at the minute we can adjust them when we've done the soldering so that's the rails roughly in position this larger of the two has a bend in the middle to go around this side of the platform that goes like that and then this extension strip on this bracket comes round underneath the railing and just forms a flange underneath and we can solder all those at the same time. It goes just a little bit beyond the end of the platform and that's just to support the ladder when uh, it's in place. So with everything in the right position, I just want to solder along these two edges here and very gently with it because I don't want to push them out of place. We've got them just right at the minute. And we could just straighten the rails up when all that's been done. And then I can just clean up the outside faces where we've done the soldering with my file. These brackets here underneath lie just inside the platform. So there's a little bit of an overhang, which I want to preserve on these. The key thing when you're soldering these is not to get solder into the grating of the platform because that's uh, a nice detail which we want to keep intact. If we start flooding that, it'll spoil the look of the platform altogether. And as I said, these are quite prominent. And the matching ladder, these do have a front and back. The, this side here has got three bolt holes in it. So that's the outside face of the ladder. We want to keep that. So with the sides bent up, we can bend the, just bend the treads into position. And that's just a case of squeezing with these very fine tweezers and they just snap up into place be between the side pieces. They don't need gluing or soldering, they're quite uh, stiff enough as they are. So that's one of the ladders. I'll just make this other platform up now and then we can move on to get these winches and doors sorted out. Okay, that's uh, four ladders and four platforms to match. Don't have to do anything with the railings. And the last thing to do is to just fold the doors. These have got uh, frames on them. 
while I've got the soldering iron out I might as well just seal those up I don't want them coming apart there we are two doors so that's all the parts that we need for the rear screens we've already got all the vents all primed and ready to paint and all the trunking parts they're all plastic so they're all in Tamiya plastic primer so I'll get these primed in etch primer then we can do the whole batch together in the grey for the ship so here are all the here are all the parts painted they don't look much different to when they're in primer this is all the ventilation trunking and the vents that we made from the Pontos set. These are the fair leads and little brackets that I missed when I did the quarter deck last week. These are resin from the Pontos set. So we can get over to the ship now and get these parts installed. First thing I want to do is fit this uh, door here. And that's just because it needs to go in before I fit the first of the ladders. Which is this one here. The door will just, the ladder will just obstruct the door if I don't do it now. So some thick super glue for these. And I just need to make sure to get it the right way up. It's a pretty annoying fly again. But I've got to have the shed door open. It's so hot at the minute. So with that door in position... I can fit the first of the ladder platforms and before I do that I just want to make sure that the railings are vertical. I just want to put a bit of glue on the back of the railing here uh, so that it actually glues to the bulkhead and again I want thick super glue. On these doorways there's a very small rain strip so the platform needs to sit just slightly below that Just put a tiny bit more just on the back of the rail there. I'm going to touch these parts up when they're dry. Uh, we'll do the same with the forward platform. Sometimes you struggle and sometimes they just drop in like that. Yesterday when I was making all these parts up I made a winch. It says in the Pontos instructions to make a winch barrel. Not the winch itself but a winch barrel for this position here. There's a hole in the bulkhead. But I've checked my references and I can't see any call for a winch at that position and I can't see it on any photographs so it's a bit of a mystery and I'm not going to fit it if it turns out that it was there I can always fit it later but uh, I don't know what the possible reason for just having a, a winch barrel on this bulkhead 
unless the machinery was in sight, but this area behind this door was a lobby basically to go into uh, the deck here. So the deck level here, this was the upper deck along here. And this was just a lobby leading to the accommodation along the upper deck. There's no sight of any winch machinery inside. So I'm puzzled about Pontos's instructions there. So I'm going to leave it off for the moment. If it turns out that there was something there, then I can always fit it later. So I can do the ladders. I've already done the port side and I found these quite tricky to line up. And I actually just lined them up dry, so no glue on these. And then when I got them into the position that I wanted, I just put a little bit of thin super glue just to hold the whole thing together. Okay, so that's more or less where I want it. I'll have to adjust the railings when I've got the glue on. And I'm going to be using some thin CA just to glue the railings at the top here. But uh, this is a bit of a dangerous exercise, so I'm just going to protect the deck with this piece of cellophane and that's just in case I get a blob coming off the nozzle. It's where these applicators come in really useful. These nozzles here, they're really cheap and I don't know, I think a pack of a hundred or so was just two or three pounds. I just put a bit more of the super glue onto the back of the rail to fix it to the bulkhead. That's the first ladder in. Let's do the next one. These are the only ladders on the ship where the handrails were wooden. So once all this is set and I've touched in with the grey, which I'm going to have to do, I'll uh, go in and paint the handrails themselves. Just eyeball that just to make sure that they're vertical and that they're fore and aft when you look from above. Good, so that's that done. Apart from, as I say, the touch-ups needed and the railings need to be fitted as well. These scuttles will be filled with crystal clear eventually. Once, the, once I'm happy with the work on the bulkhead. On the port side, I've had to fix a little error on the rear bulkhead here where it was standing just a little bit proud so it means I'm not going to be able to fit the vents uh, which sit on this aft bulkhead but I can do the rest. So with the ladders fitted I can just do this top rail. I want to do that because when I do the touching in of the grey I want it all to be a consistent colour. For railings I always add super glue to the railing itself just running a bead along the bottom. I know some people just put the glue underneath the stanchions but I'm not sure that that gives the best sort of fit. Got a little kink in that but I'll wait for the glue to dry. Otherwise I'll just be pushing the thing backwards and forwards. So with that done I can now fit these vents which were made up from the Pontos set. So we have three of these to fit. Here, here and here. All I'm going to do with these is glue them at the bottom. So these are hollow so they just fit over these little mouldings. So 
So we have a ladder to fit to this barbette which goes just forward of the vent here. Okay, we're just coming onto the port side now. I've fitted these two vents here, which are the Pontos vents. So although I cut out the trumpeter plastic parts which are shown in these positions, we don't need them obviously because the Pontos parts uh, are more accurate and replace them. So uh, we don't need any of the trumpeter plastic vents or trunking for this aft barbette. What we do need to do is replace this mushroom vent here which we fitted last week. That was just following the trumpeter instructions uh, before I realised that actually this was a different part. So I'm going to remove that which is easy enough done because we've used the MIG glue and we're going to replace that with this Pontos turned brass part for this vent. And we can use some thick super glue on that. So again, we just want to make sure that that's vertical in all directions. I think we've got that right. Okay. Okay. Back here, I've repaired the gaps that we had along this bulkhead when I came to do this uh, rear screen. So I've put some milliput filler on that <coughs> and I'll wait for that to dry, just sand it down and we'll repaint it. And until we've done that, I don't want to fit the vents which go on this aft bulkhead here. Well, last up now for the quarter deck. Uh, just a couple of last things to finish up. We've got the fair leads to fit here at the uh, stern and a couple of brackets to fit here on the deck which are Pontos resin parts, all of these. Now the thing is with the fair leads is that they come in the Pontos moulding or casting, it's a resin casting. It comes with this bulge underneath already cast into it so we don't want this trumpeter bulge so i'm going to re remove that we can touch this in afterwards and actually if i'd have read ahead far enough in the planning stages i could have removed this bulge right the way back when we built the hull which i think was probably part three or four something like that almost six months ago but it's uh, easily enough done now as long as we have a nice sharp blade these fair lead parts these are the Pontos replacement resin fair leads and they are asymmetrical so there's a side there's an end with a flat on it which goes forward so again, I'll use some thick super glue for this. I'm going to have to use a tiny little bit of milliput underneath that fair lead just to blend the bulge in again but that won't be too much of a problem. I can do the other side now. Just need to be careful with these to get them in the same position port and starboard. Okay. They're fine. This was the old uh, aft anchor hose pipe, and 
that wasn't in use by 1941 for the period when we're building the kit so we're going to have to plate that over there's no grill or grating for it but I think that there was just a steel plate covering that so we're going to have to make something and uh, just blank that off but again that's not too much of a job so the last thing I want to do before finishing for this episode is to fit these two brackets again from the Pontos resin components so I'm using acrylic glue on these because I don't want to risk super glue on them. These are tiny details, but they do make a bit of a difference to the look of the model. There we are. So there's just those two fair leads to tidy up around the bulge. We have the milliput to clean up here and repaint. I'll also touch in around the ladders just to make sure that there's no uh, glue showing on those. But uh, apart from that, I think we're done. Okay, so that's all done. The quarter deck's finished. So, obviously we need to build the turrets. <clears throat> and I've just got this little fix of this uh, after bulkhead and screen on the port side to do. That was something that someone picked up last week, actually. Uh, someone commented to say that they thought the deck might be lifting uh, at the back here near this bulkhead but it was actually an optical illusion um, it was the fact that the rear screen was standing a little bit proud of this aft bulkhead here uh, so I've had to fix that I did notice it actually last week when I was doing the video editing uh, but nevertheless someone was good enough to point out that there was a problem around there it wasn't the cause that the person thought it was but uh, nevertheless it was something that needed fixing and it's something I did actually notice in video editing as well it's interesting when you're doing the video editing you do pick up things because you're coming in a lot closer than you would normally with the naked eye uh, you do pick up things that uh, you haven't noticed before uh, and it's just useful to be able to do that and go back and make that fix so that's one that uh, I've just managed to do it just needs uh, repainting I'll just blow some of the grey in uh, on the bulkhead and the aft part of the rear screen on the port side uh, and it needs a little bit of tidy up tidying up here and there uh, on the port screen the starboard screen's fine uh, but apart from that that's it we're all done with that I really like the look of these Pontos vents with the open grills in them they're a big improvement on the trumpeter parts so i'm glad that uh, we've got those done they look nice and apart from that the rest of the quarter deck looks nice and busy moving on to next week i have got a head start i'm going to start on the forecastle deck and the anchor gear uh, but i've got a head start because i've already made uh, and prepared all these vents uh, and pieces of trunking that go around the A and B barbettes uh, and on the forward bulkhead of the lower bridge. So that will give us a good head start. But next week, apart from fitting those, I want to do the anchor gear. And I'm not going to set myself uh, a target any more than that next week because I've got a very short week uh, in the shed modelling next week. I'm out for at least three days uh, because I'm doing some uh, walking out in the lovely countryside that we've got around here in uh, the north of England. And I'm doing that with a friend of mine. And obviously after lockdown, it's good to get out uh, and get a bit of exercise. So that's what I'll be doing for most of next week. 
but I will get uh, the forward anchor gear done and the trunking and vents done on the A and B barbettes next week, probably over the weekend, but I'll post the video next Friday as usual. So I hope you'll be able to join me for that. I'm looking forward to a nice uh, sunny week next week. I hope it doesn't rain too much for us. Uh, in the meantime, have a great week, everybody, whatever you're doing. Uh, have a good week and stay safe and I'll see you in another seven days next Friday for the next part. So bye for now.